Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. I guess we are. There you go. Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Hey, it's been great, folks. Hey, we're right in the midst of politics. We got many, many issues here in the city of Portland. And one of the ones that sits right at the top of the list is the homeless problem. And, and, and guess what? The expectation is that it's going to be, it's going to get real crazy <laughs> during the summer. So we just started. So I'm always thinking about what happened to that sign when, uh, when uh, our, our governor, former governor, Vic, not Vic Atia, but uh, our, what's, what's, how about McCall, that's McCall. right, he was born, my t time passes so fast, yeah. but I, everyone should remember Governor McCall. He had a visit, but don't stay. <laughs> he had a sign up there, visit, McCall. but don't stay, and he happened to have been a Republican, okay? Yeah. And then the next time around, uh, Governor Tia was the last Republican that was elected. He took mm -hmm. it down. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, but my point is that um, it's getting that point now. See, but they, everybody's here now. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's here now. But anyway, but the the issue, I'm, the point I'm trying to make is, it's a very serious issue, folks. And uh, naturally, I happen to be running for mayor because I, I felt that uh, that's an issue that needs to be discussed. People need to be educated on what the definition of homeless is all about. Mm -hmm. It goes from housing to where they sleep to what they eat. I mean, the whole nine yard aspect of it. So, but one of the biggest aspects of it is the homing aspect of it. And so I thought I went out there and started knocking on some doors and meeting folks and and i've got two gentlemen here that i've spoken with uh, one of which was kind of like on the street and whatever and just gone so gone from input to output to throughput you know mm -hmm. what i mean i'm talking about uh, I'm mr mays here george here has been around for quite some time and he's been street roots he's been on he's been a vendor and now today he's as far as i'm concerned he's a successful vendor in his own right he he puts the he markets some bird cages if you will mm -hmm. and he's selling He's, he sells the street routes. That is the Bible, if you will, when it comes to homelessness in, in here in the city of Portland. Mm -hmm. He's affiliated with that peace aspect of it. And he, and he, and he reaches out to, uh, to other folks mm -hmm. trying to make things happen and this, that, and other for them. And I thought um, it would be good to have him on the show and we talk a little bit more about this. And then uh, I've got my, my, the gentleman here that I met him through George right in the front of street routes. Yeah. <laughs> He's in there talking. And I'd seen him on TV on several different occasions fighting for the homeless mm -hmm. and uh i mean it was something else and and i and all of a sudden there it is you know the man upstairs just say hey here's this man you got to reach and I, I put my hand out there uh, i recognize his face and, and he sort of recognized me too because you know it takes one to know one yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing about we know him. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about Ibrahim Mubarak. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, good. And so uh, he's been very, very active in the whole issue of housing. Well, other issues that goes with it. Now, mm -hmm. he, like he picks it all up for that matter. When mm -hmm. you start talking about housing, you got to pick up everything for that yeah. matter. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <clears throat> so it's, it's, gonna be, it's a pleasure to have him on the show. And I thought I'd take the opportunity to share him with you. <laughs> and then that gives me an opportunity to get a little bit more because we're going to have him on on and on and on because to solve this problem we're going to have the kind of input that we're talking about it's going to take us all yeah it's going to take this whole yeah. village of portland right? yeah <laughs> a lot of times it's already associated with the black folk but no it's the village of portland, portland. oregon okay. i mean it's, it's around the country but we're dealing we're dealing with portland right now and even though i know he he's wide range they're trying to take him from from here, but when I'm here, I'm gonna hold him up here. <laughs> he gonna hold up here for a minute until until I get my piece. <laughs> because we got some problems here. I'm running for mayor. This is my city, <laughs> and I want to make sure that it's safe, and I want to make sure that people are uh, uh, the people are taken care of. Yeah. And it's a safe area. And this, that, and the other. So, my friend, my brother, I'm sorry. We meant to get your jet. I'm like, a jet. I, I look like they're getting ready to take Trump. So, Trump's so Trump's 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 <laughs> but anyway, it's good to laugh. It's good yes, to laugh. So I want to welcome you on, both of you. Thank okay, you. Okay, guys. Uh -huh. So look here, why don't you just take the time now to, to talk a little bit more about it. One, how'd you get into this? What was your rationale for doing what you're doing aspect of it? And where are you going with it? And then, then give us the plight of homeless. Talk about it. Okay. Um, how I got involved in uh, being an advocate for the houseless community, uh, it was like back in... 1994 when I went through a bad divorce and a lot of people 
thought that uh, you know it takes two to do good okay. and bad, and but it showed all the l burden usually fall on the men, the male shoulder, and so uh, I didn't want my daughter. I didn't want to go through a big battle or nothing, and didn't want my daughter to see that because mommy and daddy didn't get along. I mean, wasn't married. Don't mean they couldn't get along. So I said, well, you can have the house. You can have everything. I can regroup and, and do good for myself. And uh, however, with the frame of mind that I had, I was with people that call themselves being successful and they didn't uh, accept failure. And I was looked at as a failure. So all those, all my friends and neighbor and family, they kind of like, uh, ostracized me hmm. and said, you can't come back till you're successful again. Hmm. And so hmm. what I did, I started traveling and going from state to city, city, state to state, and country to country and seeing different lifestyles. However, I had to stay in the houseless community hmm. in order to get back on my feet because nobody would let me stay in the house. So I went to shelters and missions and then I would flood the system with my resume, get a job, contract myself out for a year. And then in the last 90 days of that year, I go back to the street, save my money so I can go to another city and state. But something here in Portland kind of like latched on to me, put shackles on my ankles mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't leave mm -hmm. because the uh, amount of uh, social services was limiting people from becoming productive by keeping them living on the streets, by keeping them in that vicious cycle from jails to the streets to missions to jails to the street to missions. Now you can add re rehabilitation centers on that mm. because a lot of people, not a lot, but some of them are getting on drugs to deal with mm. failure because American as a country, don't like ugly things. They don't like failures. You know, if you're a base, you never hear about the team that came in second place. You always hear about the first place team. Mm -hmm. So the second place team is considered a failure. So if you're not living inside, you're a failure. And that's when the minute you lose your housing, mm -hmm. you lose you lose your rights. You lose your constitutional rights. You lose your civil rights. You lose your you lose your human rights. So in seeing that. Uh, I was saying something, something had to be done. I don't know what to do because now I was in that social status and didn't really know what to do. And so uh, I was walking down Portland Street downtown one day and Jack Tafari, who was a white roster, had long dreadlocks, came up to me and asked me in his uh, Jamaican accent, are you a Muslim? I said, as far as I know, uh, yes. Yeah. So he said, well, there's a meeting we want to talk about. Uh, this homeless academic and so at that time it was he worked for street roots and street mm -hmm. roots was a key intricate part and in fighting against homelessness at that time because most of their vendors mm -hmm. was living on the streets and it was giving them a chance to manage their life how to buy paper mm -hmm. how to manage yourself how to become yourself start a business person mm -hmm. and give back into the community and get on your feet and then the next day I was at a Mumia rally and I ran into Tim Brown and J.P. Cup, and they asked, said, hey, we got to do something about this homeless situation. So the four of us got together with other vendors from Street Roots and at that time Brian Pollard was over Street Roots and, and then Israel Byers came in. And so we used to meet and that's when we formed a group called the Homeless Liberation Front mm. and we would go and stake out land, we would put tents and so the Home Liberation Front came to be uh, Dignity Village. And so with that, we found Dignity Village and we fought for it and it kept going. But then as I was managing Dignity Village, more people was coming to me. You need to come back into the street because it's being more and more people on the street. I said, what? And so I went into the street and I saw all these runaway youth living on the street. Mm. I saw women with children living on the streets. I saw families and people getting their babies taken and they selling for, for drugs because they went to a traumatic state. And I said, something had to be done. So that's when uh, I had $10 in my pocket and a bike. And that was all I had to my name. And so I went to a copy company and made 
about ten dollars worth of flyer and say, hey, it's a group we want to form to talk about houseless issues. And so we got together, and that's when we said we everybody have a right to survive. Mm -hmm. So we call the organization Right to Survive. Right to Survive. Right. And so at the Right to Survive with form, we were doing direct actions. And, and one of our direct actions was pitch a tent where the city allowed people to, on the Rose Festival Parade, to put tents along the uh, parade route overnight so they can wake up and see the parade. Hmm. And we found that quite ironic because they're not letting homeless people do it as a means of survival. Hmm. And so we protest that and we put got up there early in the morning and put tents along the parade route and put homeless people in there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the people that was housed was complaining, why are these homeless people on the streets in tents? We said, why are you on the street with tents? Mm -hmm. right. we, we human, we just without a house. We, mm -hmm. we the same thing. So they started complaining to the police and the police tried to move us. But for some reason, people think when you lose your housing, you lose your sense. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm glad they thought that about mm -hmm. us. And that's how we was able to defeat them because we read we read the ordinance and the zoning and the code and we said, here, we can be here. It didn't say a different social status can come in and join the parade. It says for all the, the citizens or people in Portland. Mm -hmm. So they had to back off us. Mm -hmm. And then we met uh, after uh, Michael Wright and, and John Cassette was having a battle with the city about their land, and he said, they won't let me do nothing with my land, so I give it to that guy who found Dignity Village, and that's when he contacted me. Mm. And so we put Right to Dream 2 on that spot. Ah. And so Right to Dream 2 is a different type of shelter where we allow people to come in and sleep, but we try to cater to the whole uh, houseless population, like people with pets, mm. couples that's not married, mixed couple, same-sex couple, single people, people with different gender preference. Mm -hmm. That's the whole community. Skinheads, Muslims, Christians, uh, African-American, ex-gay members, drug dealers, mm -hmm. they all need to sleep because they're human. Mm -hmm. So then we figured we can educate them to combine their efforts together and use their knowledge and experience to fight this system that's making people lose their housing not because of the color of their skin or they or their ethnicity or their high school or ed or college diploma because they want to outprice and make Portland the city to live in so they gentrify a neighborhood in the high cost of housing and rental where anybody can lose their house and become on the street. And since we gather these people and we know that, we put in our efforts together but the first thing we ask them is to put your differences behind you mm -hmm. and come fight right. together because mm -hmm. we fight in the same fight and we'll be strong if we together. So that's how I got into helping mm -hmm. houseless people because I became houseless and I seen the situation on how people couldn't become productive again. And we need that because they recycle paper, they recycle right. glass, they recycle right. plastic, mm. but they don't recycle the mind, the knowledge, mm. what they need to recycle. Mm. 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 Well, then, look here. Let's let's talk a little bit about, again, like I say, the expectation is that this summer is going to be a, a tough one. Is yeah. that a fact, you think? That's a true fact. It's going to be a tough one because uh, Portland is in the middle of the hub of the travelers, people coming from California to Portland to Washington to Canada, from Canada to Washington to Portland mm -hmm. to California. But we, it's the center of the hub because <coughs> Portland and Oregon, they do feed people. If mm -hmm. you go hungry in Portland, <clears throat> because you don't want to eat. Right, right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and that's you, you, right. you can eat here. That's right. You can you eat, eat here. here. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but so far, <laughs> but so far it's clothing, medical, health, dental, housing, and stuff like that. They don't have that. They don't have they, they not, they, they, they miss that. It went sh past oh, them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, because they don't consider the people, I guess, human, and they put them in an inhumane situation. So it's going to be busy in the streets because as you can look up, go down Williams and Vancouver Northeast and any other places that's been gentrified, they build on all these high rise apartments. Jeez. The cheapest one is 2200 a month mm -hmm. and the, and the, well, and the, and the low and the low income salary yeah. is 
what nine something an yeah, hour, right, right. and the salary is not compatible to what the prices, the high prices mm -hmm. here. So people are losing their homes, they losing their family, they losing their dignity, mm -hmm. they losing mm -hmm. their scruples, their principles, their morals, their self esteem, and they living on the street. Now nobody taught us how to live on the street. They taught us how to be politicians. Uh, right. <laughs> they, taught us to be. <laughs> they taught us to be no, 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 doctors. Let's make sure we get clear. Okay, that's clear. I'm not a politician. Okay. Okay. Because if I was a politician, I wouldn't be sharing this. Okay. With, with them. Yeah, with them. Saying, okay, because you, you learned so it from this. Me. Is, I, I want to put the issue out on the table. Okay. I'm solving them okay. now. Okay. I okay. ran for, I'm running for office, but I'm mayor now okay. when I filed the run. Okay, we're mayor Till May Bruce 17th. Sean. We're mayor Bruce okay, Yeah, now, talk Bruce to me Sean. that way. Now, okay. What's the problem? Uh, <laughs> we are taught to be certain things, and nobody okay. is taught how to live on the street. Okay. And so and that's where right to survive and right to dream. Two want to come in there and educate people on the proper mannerism on living on the street. Of course... You're going to take what we teach you and run with and do it your own. Right. But you got things that are criminalize you mm -hmm. and won't allow you to be productive. Because if you go look for an apartment or a job, everybody know at the bottom of that application, you can fit right in. They ask you, has you ever been, have you ever committed a crime? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been evicted? Mm -hmm. And if you say yes... Bam, you they go your chance. Go back to street. So in order to stop you from getting productive, they impose an unjust laws on the houseless community. One of the biggest things, what I always tell people, is no public restroom. And you have to exercise your human right, a God-given right, when you eat and drink. You got to use the restroom. So in Portland, what about Randy Little? Now Randy, I understand he put some. He he put the lube out. He did that and spent all that money, but they closed at a certain time. So what he trying to tell people, you can't, you you can't, you have to control your body function from a certain time to a certain time. What? I mean, if you close the public restroom, well, that, you can't not, use it during that time. That's not the way it was advertised. Well, I, I believe was, was people need deal. to talk to us and come out to the street and find okay, out good, reality yeah, yeah. That's because I mean. that's where reality okay. is at. Okay. All this superficial, mm. uh, secular humanism mm. is doing things to cater mm. to the one percent. Mm. You never see nothing talking about a houseless person helped this person or did that. You always see a houseless person in urine drenched clothes with no teeth, I have teeth, mm -hmm. next to a burning barrel with a wine bottle of their hands up, give me more money so mm -hmm. I can get drunk. Mm -hmm. That's how they advertise homeless people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid of that. Mm -hmm. But that's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. That's not reality. That's, that, okay, okay, that's why okay, reality okay, is okay, that okay. any given moment, you can live on the street. Oh, yeah, hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> any, but you're not that way. So. What, so what I always tell people, the streets ain't land on the houseless community. The houseless community came to the street. And whatever you were when you came to the street, that's what you are. Mm. And so you can't blame the streets and saying this, making this that is bad. Mm. The people from the houses making it bad. I mean, you don't have no meth lab on the streets. <laughs> you don't have no yeah, people yeah. kidnapping yeah, big people. Houses. Yeah, yeah, big houses. Yeah, you don't have no people with boats. Yeah. You know, <laughs> these are the rich people that are bringing that negative to the street and making money off their situation because they're being depressed and their situation they're being going through trauma stages because their families being separated. Mm. They have men shelter, women shelter. Where do the children go? Mm. They go to foster right. care, and it's right. creating a traumatic experience to that family. And so that's why you're having a lot of youth on the street because they run away from foster care because mm. people are not treating them with love and care. They're treating them as monetary figures. Mm. And so the biggest thing is the runaway children mm -hmm. and then people exercising the human right on using the restroom. If you caught in Portland, Oregon, using the restroom outside three times and giving a citation, you have to register as indecent exposure, which is a mild sex offense. And people look at sex offense and don't read the gory details that you was using the bathroom. Mm. Hey, okay, you can work. They look at that title. Yeah. And so that stops you from getting work or housing. Mm. If you're mm. hungry, like in the French Revolution, the man stole bread to feed his children. If you steal, you're labeled as a thief. And what company want to hire a thief? You may steal from that company. So that stops you from getting. If 
if if your uh, criminal lies for sleeping for trespass, they call it criminal trespass too, for sleeping in front of a business or a building, they can give you that citation and you have to pay $250 to do community service. You got criminal trespass on you. From when I was growing up, I thought trespass is once you go past a gate on somebody's private property or into somebody's house or store and you're not supposed to be there. The sidewalk is public. Unless I check whether you're houseless or not, you're the public. So why can't you utilize public space? Hmm. Well, now a couple I, of questions. <laughs> I, I like it. I'm liking it even better. But I'm gonna, but I'm gonna throw a couple of questions in there right now, yeah. and then you can just continue on. One, there was this big effort by Mayor Charlie Hill. He's still the mayor today. He mm -hmm. said, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna house all the homeless." And then, then uh, you know, that's how we met, because I was up there looking for vets. Yeah. And I was trying to find out <laughs> yeah. where, where were they, okay? Yeah. But they were two certain, two separate groups, so I, so I was looking for the vets. But at the other side of the car, I was trying to figure out what was the deal. One, there was a number that was thrown out there. I think it was about 3,000. That's how many people on the it's street on the or street, how many right. veterans how, on I'm, the street? No, how many, how many homeless people? I think that's people. how many veterans on the street. How they many can't veterans? count how, how, all the homeless people. Because so how many are and, 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 as, as we know, capitalism likes to segregate, keep things separate so yeah. we won't know what's happening. We mm. figure out, hey, the same thing's happening to me, and that's what's happening in the houseless community. We're the real melting pot. You have your industrial, which people mm. stay in the industrial area, live in mm. industrial area. You have your uh, 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 downtown people, your business, where people stay in the business area, and you have your residential, hmm. your commercial, your industrial, and your residential. Those are three separate types of houseless people. Any given time, you won't see people. You'll see people out there, but you won't see everybody because, as I said, said before, you have people sleeping in cars in front of an right. abandoned factory mm -hmm. to keep right. their families together. You think they're going to let you interview them and say, yeah, me and my yeah. eight-year-old mm -hmm. or three-year-old mm -hmm. child is living in a car so mm -hmm. you can come take my car? Mm -hmm. We're houseless, not senseless. Then you have the invisible houseless. The people that sleep in them, that's couch surfing, that's sleeping in people's garages, and those people, they can't count. Mm -hmm. So that count is superficial. Really? Yeah. Give me, give me an estimate. In Portland, you've been, you've been in out Portland, there. In Portland, I say it's probably close. If the runaways and invisible, close to about 5,000 plus. 5,000 plus. Yeah. And now the travelers are ready to come here. It's ready to be more people. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, what, now, a statement was made that all the veterans were housed. So uh, that's what I'm saying. I couldn't yeah. find them. Now I know. Now I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Now I found them. That's what I told you. I found them. With these. I found them. Okay. The thing, they, 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 yeah. the thing them. you found them, I and found that's them. true. You have yes. to go out there to look for yeah. them, look in mm -hmm. bushes, go to Washington mm -hmm. Park. Right, 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 go to, right, Yeah, go right. all these places. But I thought that, but, but when someone says to me, we found housing for all of them. I thought I could go to this structure where everybody was there and then say, okay, fine. If they're all there, right? You can find out their name. Yeah. You got a social security number. Exactly. You know, who you did, what and you did, whatever, and then take care of some of the issues. And it ain't happening. It, it, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. <laughs> wow. Right, so, let, me, let me give you two things on that. They got this lot of money, how much, $25, $50 million right, right. to house veterans and women with children. Right. But what happened to men with children? That's right. What do they right. consider families? Do I have to be married to a woman or a man or same sex in order to be a family? Mm -hmm. Family is who I call my family. This is my partner. Mm -hmm. I don't have, and they do that because you ain't patronizing the marriage institution to pay that money. Mm -hmm. So you can say, oh, we're married. Mm -hmm. No. So, so what's happening, they did get that money. They are giving out vouchers to, to women with children and veterans, but nobody will rent to them. Wow. And if they don't right. use that voucher within That's 90 right. days, they lose that voucher for, and they have to get on that waiting list for another two years to wait another two years to get on that waiting list. So that's the problem that's happening. That, and plus, the well, voucher you, you, you is just eight, said eight hundred dollars right. yeah, a month, right. you just and said these said apartments something. are twenty two hundred. Right. That's what I'm saying. You just so said something. How can now they I get understand inside? why they put that so, number up there? Right. So <laughs> they saying this is what they doing. That's the effort, and people uh, are saying, "Oh, Portland is housing the homeless." Uh, that's not true. Oh, they wow. giving them money if. They can have people that can rent to them or find family-friendly yeah. landlord. Or Portland can build their own apartment builders and put people in there. Mm -hmm. Or you can pay parents or grandparents 
to house their children that, that's not having work, pay them that live free because then all the burden won't fall on the grandparents <coughs> who's getting Social Security. Mm-hmm. Or, or some of these shelters or entities or neighborhood association can fix up the bad abandoned houses, fix them up, and use share housing techniques. Mm-hmm. Rent out a room for 200 and 250 mm-hmm. but screen the people that's coming there and have them go through entities like Right to Dream too. That's educate the people that mm-hmm. do apartment readiness. Mm-hmm. All of these things can be, in fact, but for some reason, the city officials don't want to do this because it mm-hmm. seems too much like they doing right and having people mm-hmm. be productive. I think they want to chase all the undesirable out and make Portland look pretty, come to our city and bring these big money companies in where they can send their employees here to hire. Mm-hmm. That's what they want. So that's what the deal is. Of course. Wow, wow. Of course. Well, tell me they this. don't care about people. You well, know well, that I, they care about money. If you got money, yeah. you can do well, what you, you want. You always follow the money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. But, having, but, at the same, but at the same time, when I saw you on the tube, okay, mm-hmm. I saw you from the standpoint of saying, well, wow, the media's got this person on the tube talking about what our issues are, what our problems are, mm-hmm. and we're going to solve the problem because we got the guy that's telling us exactly what the problem is. And somebody, and people like you, but you were you were out there, yeah. Right. You you were out there, right there on Burnside right. and where that corner was. You know what yeah, I'm, I'm still that. there. That, that was, <laughs> still, <laughs> still there. They <laughs> say we wouldn't be there 30 <laughs> days and <laughs> go five no, years. Wait, now. Wait, 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 you know you're right. You no, can do what wait, you want to do. Yeah, they do it. I thought they had found you a nice place again. Somebody, they they, they have, complex or something. Oh, no, they wanted there. to find us a building, but it didn't meet our concept okay. because in the building, again. You can't have men and women, and then women uh, with children or families or pets or LGBT community or the same-sex community, uh, partners in that certain building. Uh, That's why certain shelters is just a men's shelter. It's just a women's woman uh, shelter. Yeah. But then a new thing is coming up, the LGBT community is saying, what you going to do with they human? What you going to do with emancipated youth, youth who divorce their parents and become adults? Are you going to put them in a youth shelter when they're an adult? What are you going to do with people who have service pets? Are you going to let the pets in the shelter? You can't do that on the inside. So that's why Right to Dream 2 is so a significant part to Portland's economic system because we save them money. It costs us 2100 a month to house over 100 people a day plus. We pay for our own porta potty, we pay for our own electric, our own liability insurance, our own water, our own internet, we clean our own sleeping bags, we feed people, we take care of ourselves because we don't dictate, we, we are the community. We know what it takes for us to get on our feet. They just not let we and, and what's what's that cartoon? Frog horn, leg horn, oh. on board. He said, I keep a pigeon them, son. You just a missile. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. You know, because I, I just I just I just heard a number the other just to, just now on another show about two thousand dollars a day for servicing homeless. I mean, that's a lot of money. And that's per person, right? That, that's what I'm saying, per person. Yeah. I heard that number, but what you're talking about is not $2,000 per day. With that right. kind of money, you... <laughs> I wish I could make $2,000 no, per no, day. No. But, and, and see, a lot you, of people you got, don't you got, think... you got extra beds in it? <laughs> <laughs> see, what, what people don't realize, they say the house's community is not patronizing this city, but that's mm. wrong. Most people who live on the street do work, but they don't make enough. Right. They do work when they work at night, when they get off of work, ain't no shelters or mission open. They do get SSI, they do get unemployment, but they don't make enough to get things. So where do they spend their money? Mm. They buy food, yeah. they go mm-hmm. to the convenience store, mm-hmm. they go to these motels and stay, mm-hmm. they buy clothes, mm. they go to the shows, mm. they go to the mall, they go to bars, they do all of that when they get their money. And people don't think that uh, they patronize and it's also, but they clean up, the people go, the city is spending more money on houseless people going to get, try to get medical help from the hospitals. They have to use their, uh, what they call them, the uh, 
I don't know. We just call them paddy wagon or ambulance. I don't know mm -hmm. what they call them here. Care. E unit or care, care unit, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. They take them to that costs money. Then for them to be seen by doctors costs money repeatedly because there's no recuperating shelter. We got a guy right now who had to get his gallbladder taken mm -hmm. out. They kept him for a day, and guess where they sent him? Home, which is on the street. They have a woman who have a baby or miscarriage. They keep her for a day, and guess where they send her? On the streets. Cause she, street. that's where she live. So we need recuperating right. center. I just got over pneumonia, fighting pneumonia. If I didn't have a room renting out a room, guess where they would have sent me? Back on the street where I caught pneumonia. Wow, wow. And and these things, they don't. That's why they need to listen to us because they not helping solving the people that's living on the street. They just doing what they think is most, where they can make the biggest money. And if and, and they afraid that if all these houseless people get housed, then they lose their job security. Mm -hmm. And they may be in that soup line mm -hmm. waiting two years to get on a two year waiting list. So that's about five years you wait in order wow. to get housed. Wow. Now what you do within those five years is up to the you and how the city and how people treat you. Mm -hmm. So, so here we go. Here, here we're in a situation. Go. I'm talking about solutions, right? right? Solutions. As, okay. Excuse the French. As, as Don would say, we got to make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make a deal. We got to make a deal. <laughs> Some way, shape, or form, we got to uh -huh. break this piece, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you feel we can do? Uh, 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 what, what do you feel you can do with this entity on this side and you on this side aspect? Of, what can we do, i.e., if you will, to respond to some of those issues? We can't do it all at one time. We know that, right? Mm-hmm. We can't do it all. As Jenny Nelson, the founder of Sister Little Rose, told me when I first mm -hmm. started doing Dignity Village, when I was gun ho about this thing, where y'all going to put these people in the house, she told me, nobody have a monopoly on homelessness. Nobody. Right. But we just uh, uh, in the meantime mm -hmm. situation. We, we, want, we want what everybody want, people off the streets. We just have a different, more productive way of doing it. Some people want us to get swept out of sight, you know, sweet reality mm -hmm. under the carpet, mm -hmm. saying we don't have no houseless problem or nothing. Some people don't want to deal with it. But each entity have its own form on getting productive. Now, we say our produc productive rate is better than any social service, any mm. shelter there is in this city. Because in the five years we've been there, going on five years, that's been ran and operated by houseless people themselves. 289 people found work. 299 people got housing. 35 people quit drug habits. 18 people is doing online education. And two last year graduated from college, P mm -hmm. PSU and PCC. 17 women had their babies and because we sent on the midwife. The hospital is obligated to call DHS where they right. come snatch right, the right. baby. So we don't, we send them the midwife. Well, tell so me this. In what? that statistic, that, that long you. when we doing this by ourselves, wow. without partnering up with no other entity, mm -hmm. I think that's more successful. I think it is. Now, have you shared that with this entity? I shared that no, with... No, you didn't. No, you haven't now. I shared that with everybody I who talked did, to, and who I'm did sharing you? it with... Where's the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're sharing, sharing it with, it with you. you. <laughs> no, 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 point to me. Now, you can't... I'm going to share it with me. I'm the guy that's going to solve your problem. I want to increase that. I'm sharing I'm what, sharing it with you. Yeah, what can because, we do? Uh, what, 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 I, I, think, I think we need more outdoor shelters. I think we need more family shelters mm -hmm. where I think we need more recuperate. I don't think we need to take women that live on the street, take their babies. they not bad parents. Mm -hmm. they just in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. But when you take that baby away, you cause traumatic stress on that baby. Mm -hmm. You cause traumatic stress oh, yeah. on that oh, woman yeah. Oh, yeah. and that man. Mm -hmm. And then families get involved. And some women just go, oh, what to use? Because then you got to jump through hoops. And if you miss one of those hoops during that cycle, you got to start over. And there's more time you're spending away from your baby. Mm -hmm. There's more time DHS is controlling your life for something that's completely not your fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, tell me this. Have, they, have this side sought you out after they've gotten the facts? Sought you out and said, okay, fine. Well, we might not be able to answer all of, the, all of these issues. 
but we can answer some of them. Some and, and some of them are answering and they getting paid big money for taking the ideas that we giving them. They taking and saying this is Well, you didn't ideas. get the money. No, we don't get the money. I don't get paid for doing what I do. I get paid attention. I get sweat equity. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people in the houses community uh, love me because they know I'm standing up and fighting for them. Right. Yeah. And so, but so far, uh, getting paid, or our organization getting paid, how we do it, we make our own souvenirs. We got T-shirts. We have buttons. We have DVD. We got bumper sticker. We teach the houses community how to do grant writing, where we write grants. Yeah, right, right, we right. just got a capacity building grant from our McKenzie River our Gathering Foundation of 90,000 over a three year span mm -hmm. to help us build more. Uh, These kind of dignity buildings. Yeah, right? and helping people more and reaching out to the communities. Huh. So we are doing our part. We are educating the people and that's how people is getting productive. But so far, when we give an idea, we talk, like I'm talking to you. Right, 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 right. You right, would, right. Hold right. on to it for a year and right. then come out and say, hey, let's start a new organization, yeah, right. Home for it. We're going to do that. Right. Right. And it's our idea. And so they getting paid. They should give that money to the grassroots people right. to help more people, right. to build more. In the meantime, villages, rest area, or campsite. Well, well who have you been talking with at City Hall? As, as the mayor come out to your place, was they okay? Fine. The mayor Charlie Hills Charlie came, came out by. before he got yeah. uh, okay. elected, and he came out after he got elected. But when, and what, now what, what about he, he, he's he, in between. We it was a battle because the developers was in his ear. But now that he's gone, now he's trying to do something good. Yeah. He got the state Last of emergency. Yeah, yeah he's trying to now. do something. Uh, my hero and my champion is Commissioner Amanda Fritz. Amanda. Yeah. Ah, Amanda. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's, yeah she, that's Amanda. She, she's a gym. Amanda. Yeah, she, Amanda. she. Commissioner Amanda Fritz is up on a house with situation. Okay. The rest Ooh. of them, Nick Fish, Dan oh, Sausman, Nick, yeah. and, and, and. And Dan, well, Dan's, in the, well, Dan's in the business. Yeah. 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 And he's he ain't going to. He's in the business. But, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he the yeah. one in, in, when we was uh, I mean, fighting fact, to go yeah. over to the southeast side, yeah. fourth and Harris, third and Harrison. Now, mm -hmm. he said. I'm shocked that women are scared to go to the hospital to have mm -hmm. baby. I want to have in y'all right that y'all uh, turn those women over to a federal institution. Mm -hmm. Women mm -hmm. have a right to choose if they want to go to a hospital, midwife, have a birth, abortion. That's their right. We can't say, oh, homeless woman, you having a baby. You have to go to this federal institution. What mm -hmm. they going to do? Mm -hmm. Do like the Tuskegee experiment? Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. Well, in all due, in all due <laughs> respect, what are they doing with these you, you, or is yeah. it, or they can put them in a, yeah, in, a, yeah, in, a, in, a, in a, I, I mean, we can go with it. We can yeah, let yeah. our no, no, no. Man. I, I, so I why would they, they go good. want to be put I in a federal I institution? Well, I, I, that's again, that's what we're talking about here. That's yeah. why we're doing it here publicly okay. and being very transparent. And that's about what it. I'm talking See, to. See, and, and yes, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna districtize the city. That's right. So I'm gonna have to assign folks to area, right? Yeah. And I think what you what you're telling me is that you want me to have Dan. I'm gonna assign. Dan to that issue you just shared with me, you see. Yeah, I would like I would like him to explain himself more accountable what he's talking because about. Because he's in the housing business. Yeah, that's right. And mm -hmm. why he can't send women that live inside to these federal institutions. Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. just the houses? Why are you singling them out? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to tell us something? Mm, is he is he a, a, is he a classes? Mm, interesting. Got different social well, status. Well, well, I mean, these are questions he needs to answer. Right, right, yeah. And then because maybe there's some rationale about what he's saying, but he needs to put it on the table. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And if you don't understand, that's right. come to me. That, I'll help you understand. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But we want to do it transparently. Yeah. We want to do it publicly. That's right. I don't want behind doors. Exactly. I want to make sure that if we have this conversation when I'm mayor, when we're going to have We TV. shouldn't have the conversation. You should already know what to do. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> right. I'm one right. step from that. I'm one Urgent. step. I'm trying to get Urgent. to the step. Urgent. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm trying to learn, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I went out there, and as I indicated to you before, that's how I met you, because, yeah. in all due respect, I was looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, mean, I kept knocking on doors. I, I knocked at City Hall for yeah. days, all of them. But they wouldn't give me any information. <laughs> they right, you went to the right place. You, know you want to know about houselessness? Come to Right to Dream too. Yeah. Right to Survive. Oh, no, it's good. Can, you know, and so, so that's where I'm coming from. So now, I guess where I'm coming from is that what do you have on the table now to go to the next step? What we have on the table now is to evolve the rest area to have uh, 
uh, laundry facilities because people can't look for work with dirty clothes. We won't have showers. People can't go look to productive, musty, and it's going to get hot. We won't have regular plumbing restrooms. We'll have a meeting spot, and we're going to have storage. So you can't don't have to worry about taking all your belongings and hiding them in bushes while you're doing a job interview. Interesting. You can store it there. And I think the next move, it, it, are we doing something called the Homeless Bill of Rights, which got to SB 629 in the Senate last year, which... At the uh, Oregon Senate? Yeah. Who, who, who wrote the bill? Who, who, who? Uh, we wrote the bill. The but, House but who carried it? But some, you have to identify uh, uh, someone. Uh, we had uh, Chip Shields was our champion. Chip Shields? Well, he's yeah. not, well, well, he's he's not he, there anymore. I know. Now. We he, have to find he, a new he, he champion. You don't have a so champion? So, we're looking for one. Okay. Well, yeah. Lou Frederick is supposed to... Uh, oh, you smile. What, what happened on that one? <laughs> I had to talk for Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I had to talk for Lou. And the man the Lou said he wants to have but he wants that seat. The so dude. he should be on the yeah. top of it <laughs> yeah, right he should, now. He should come seeking yeah, us yeah, out instead of we seeking out him out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah, want my right. vote, come to me, yeah, come yeah, to yeah. my office. So you, you know who you are? You know Lou Fred. Yeah, Lou Do. I call him Lou Do. Lou Do. Yeah, Lou Do. You say Lou Do Do. He's a good man. He has good intentions. But I don't see him after he gets elected. But he's running now. that's that. He's on a post. He's on a post. So they you really come can't out fight. when they want your vote. They want to do yeah, this, but when yeah, they get your yeah, vote, yeah. they 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 shrink. I guess yeah, they yeah, they yeah. their capability no shrink because I think everybody is after them to do something. They got to pick well, and choose. Well, but, but, but you don't it's start from the top. Or you have to start yeah, from see. the bottom. You ever see a building being built from the top? Right, right, right. You build them from the right, bottom. You right, build right, up. Right, so right. you work with those people right, that's right. less than. Right. And if Portland listen and work with the less than people, they'll be a renowned yeah, city. Yeah, Everybody yeah. be saying, that's oh, the yeah, city. It's, it's huge, they right. will invest in this it, city. It, it, very much so. Very much right. so. No. See, in fact, you know, and I got to make that point to you is that you know, that's what we're dealing with this whole issue with this presidential race. Now. Even though even though Trump is where he's at, but he's saying, I'm an independent man. Yeah. And all the yeah. other politicians are the folks that follow the money. Yeah. Who's yeah. paying the money? Who's paying the <laughs> money? They, if yeah. you pay the money, guess what? You got to pay the piper, yeah. right? That's so so we saying. need right. so we need independent minded thinkers. No yeah. respect like yourself and all yeah. that's where I'm at. I mean, as right. far as I'm concerned, I want to solve the problem. And and, and when let me problem. let me put the when issue. you become mayor, what the first thing you should do is make things affordable. Affordable brings spending power. Man. Spending power brings employment. If 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 someone wants this vest right, right, and they right. can well, buy it for five dollars, then they can request for a whole bunch of vests. So I can't handle it by myself. So I'm gonna hire somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's that's Amanda's job. <laughs> so I got I got Amanda picked out <laughs> okay. already. I got fish picked out already. I got yeah. Dan picked out already. And I got one more left on the table. And you know who he's about, right? What do you think? You know what I'm talking about? I don't well. You know that young man? Oh, you, 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 you didn't even smile on him. <laughs> you didn't even you 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 really start laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> you just ran back. <laughs> I about did. I mean, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, hey, oh. Oh. Stretch out. Well, you know, uh, he, he, uh, he, he I, I don't think he's going to be reelected. Uh, Steve, you talking about Steve, Steve Novak. Steve Novak. But they yeah, got a lot of money about him. They got but, a lot of money on him. Right, what right have he else. done? Okay. For this city. Okay. What have you? What significant thing have you done? I know he had a warm chairs where he wanted everybody to st uh, stand up and not sit down. I know he had a war on Coca Cola. So, but what significant thing are you doing to improve the status of this city? Mm -hmm. And that's what politicians supposed to do: improve your city, improve whatever. Anybody that's well, in management, you improve the situation. Yeah, but what I understand, he's done a lot. He, what? He put the bike lanes out there. They been and there. He, 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 <laughs> and he didn't charge him no taxes to ride down there. Nobody. But, you know. but look at the parking meters. Uh, well, look uh, at the places. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, they make see, enough for one thing. So, they they pay 30000 You know those things that go over the bike, the back racks? Yes, the right, things right. that go over them yeah, glass yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, those were yeah. 30000 apiece. Now, if you got a right to drink too, would house a hundred more than a hundred people a day, and it's less than thirty thousand. When you want to invest your money into getting people off the sidewalk right, so they can right, get right. what what bike need a uh, 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 something? They metal. Right. That's not human. You more right. in, 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 uh, 
you more concerned about your body getting wet right, 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 right. Mm. than a human laying on the ground well, getting wet. Well, you know, I got to ask you this because you're getting and very all, and, yeah. and also, the, getting these poop parks, I know people like their pets, but they get in these poop parks where dogs can go poop. But where's humans can go poop? Mm. Wow. Somebody's priority right. took a wrong turn in New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico, wow, right? Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> they, reason, <laughs> they reasoning is boom. Well, you know, I got to ask you this other question. This, this is a major question. Now, you know, here we are with three brothers sitting here. Come to right. I'm, I'm, I'm running for office. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's going into business. Yeah. Yeah. And you, 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 you on a I'm crusade. Down, you, I'm you on a crusade. crusade. See, in all due respect to you. I feel like sometimes I'm like Don Quixote with Dr. <laughs> At least I got two arms. You know? That's right. I'm trying. Okay? That's right. We try. But the bottom line is that, you know, homeless and whatever, looking at us and you, mm. you're operating whatever, look like evidently we're talking about just black folks. You got to got to be 100% black folks in that in that dignity village, right? No. No, wait, wait no. A minute. No, got to be. No. No, got to be. You it's, it's you no, can't it's represent no, it's, it's no it's no people of color in dignity village and it's very What's few that? What people. Was it? Wait, say that one more time. In, in dig, no people of color on dignity village. And if we got about two people of color at right to drink too, you got more young uh white people from the ages of 24 on to about 30 that's on the street where the people of color go i don't know but mm. i see them on the streets all the time but they don't utilize these facilities wow. for some reason wow. i don't know well you know there's i try to talk to them they come on yeah you know if you if, if people's on the streets not just people of color right, right, right. anybody's on the street using drugs right. why would you take a felony chance on going to prison right. doing drugs mm -hmm. in the street than taking a felony chance and fighting for your rights to be wow. free. Wow. And wow. once you win your right, you got to fight to keep wow. your rights. Wow. Right. wow. Do me a right. favor. Go we'll get your heat real quick. I want to make oh. sure. She's going to talk to yeah, 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 If I can go yeah. and let you and she yeah, yeah, yeah. and him yeah. talk. No, no, you're going to. No, they're going to keep me. I'm going to get you. 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 I want to make sure she heats. We want to make sure we get a stamp. Yeah. A stamp from Shaheed okay. with you here, see? Okay. Like I told you, I'm going to hold you here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get this, this thing done. This is not a house. This is a house yeah, person. No. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you, may, you may be on staff. I mean, even though it's a contract. <laughs> yeah. But we got, no, really, we need to discuss this issue. Okay. And in all due respect, the people who are making the decisions, in all due respect, mm -hmm. who are making decisions, who are not really responding to some of the issues you're talking about. These are very right. serious issues. And from an economic, come on, she come just come sit down. From an economic point, you got to realize there's six percent people of color in this whole state, right. and of those six percent, three percent is in prison. Uh, uh, two percent is on drug, and the other percent is living on the streets. Now, where the percentage that being productive in this city, I don't know, but they should start reaching now and helping their family members. Say, I know you made a mistake. I'm gonna give you a chance to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing Shahid on because he, he he's, he's he's a journalism like I am, <laughs> and, and I had already indicated to him that we're gonna keep him here because to solve this issue of homelessness. I mean, if we've we been solve talking. the issue of homelessness. We have done with the big thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but my point is that, but you're part of the responsibility too, because see, we're communicators. Absolutely. And so I want to make sure you we got you, you, you get to know who you are, right. and the okay. fact that the public knows that you know him too. Right. Yeah, that's right. important. Yeah, yeah. I mean? well, I've been a long admirer in, uh, of Ibrahim Mubarak, and we are, are members of the same community out here trying to, to make a difference. And I admire him a great deal because he works with a population that a lot of folks uh, don't work with. And it was interesting when you talk about the journalism factor and us being communicated. It was interesting the the other night when they had on P, uh, PBB the six contenders for, for for mayor, and it was no African Americans or no color on that, and that 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 struck me as really uh, here we go again. You know, we're not part of the, the not at the table. Not, they used to have a city council seat yeah, yeah. specifically for African Americans, right, right. uh, do and they don't do that anymore. Right. So. You know, uh, I'm wondering just how serious they are about about housing. You know, Charlie Hale's been mayor for, you know, here he goes again with a new proposal. But it's broader than that. I was listening to your mm -hmm. conversation, and, and I love listening to Ibrahim because he's so knowledgeable about the homeless issue. But uh, it's a, we need a comprehensive mm -hmm. 
because it's not just about housing, it's about mental health, oh, it's oh, about yeah. Oh, yeah. addiction, it's, mm-hmm. it's about, mm-hmm. you know, education. But he's things. handling all that. That's what I'm saying. It's all under one roof. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. That's what we got that's what we gotta make sure that we sit down and, and, and that's one that's one of the reasons why we're doing the show. Mm-hmm. The whole idea is to give the viewing public the opportunity to hear what the issues are mm-hmm. from someone who has knowledge. Now, hopefully, they, that would be trans. Because see, sometimes you need a translator when when a brother like that talks. <laughs> so we're translating. See, we're translating, okay. and hopefully, this could be shared with the other meetings, like meetings like yourself and whatever. And you, we've been we've been doing this for a number of years. A number K of years. Boo all over the place, yeah. uh, and and uh, so hopefully, we will get this to the folks because mm-hmm. we're gonna blast it out. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm running for mayor. So I can tweet, I can do all kinds. Of, I'm at the table, let's put it that way. So hopefully the people who are making those decisions that have caused the problem, that want a solution, but they need to be educated. And then this is hopefully, this is what we're going to be doing with what he's doing. Absolutely. They need to know what he's doing. That this is just not, a, in all due respect, this is not a, just a black thing. And, no. you know, and we, right. we're a whole bunch of druggers and all this right. other stuff right. and pimping folks and this, that, and the other. Right. This is real world stuff about people. Right. Mm-hmm. This man, this is man, he's talking about real people. <laughs> real issues. <laughs> That's a very serious. Can I, on. Can I ask on. One, one question that because uh, this troubles me so, so much and I, I'd like to get your opinion on it. Uh, housing, the whole issue of housing, in my opinion, mm-hmm. I think the city government has sold out to the developers. Oh, yeah. No, oh yeah, that's, that's and not, when yeah. you look at when you look at Williams Avenue, when you look mm-hmm. at Vancouver Avenue, when you look at Mississippi, when you look at Alberta, you know, and they used to have a thing, as you well know, uh, Bruce, about gerrymandering. Oh yeah, where oh, yeah. they would redistrict the lines and draw oh, yeah. the lines oh, yeah. to, oh, yeah. to take the power away from redlining. Yeah, redlining yeah, yeah, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. now what they do is move the people instead of yeah, yeah, they don't yeah, they don't move yeah, the lines. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they move yeah, the people. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, uh, what what is your take on how the the, the city government has related to the development, the the, the developers and and the whole approach to a comprehensive housing plan. Mm-hmm. The thing of it is, is that uh, it, they have this thing, the guy uh, who originated is from Portland and he took it to New York. It's called the broken window theory. Mm-hmm. The broken window theory, you make one house or a community or neighborhood look so unattractive, nobody want to come patronize or live in there until the property value go down. You, you, you redline those people that living in that area and you won't give them, the, you know, they banks come up, you won't give them no loan to repair their houses. You won't give them no job so they can get money to repair their house. All of a sudden the houses is falling down and breaking in yeah. and then they and then they kicking people out because what people don't know, you can buy your house and have it paid for 30 years, but you can't pay that property tax. They come take that house from you. And so that's what happened in these areas that you mentioned. And they moved all the people of color out to, they call it out to 122nd Pass. Mm-hmm. And now this is prime property where the developers can come get it cheap and they come and build all these high rises up tear all these houses down, they go to mom and pa stores, they go to black churches, they go to uh, community centers, they go to uh, schools, to high school, to grade school. All of these things is being torn down in the name of uh, gentrification. Gentrification, and, uh, yeah, redevelopment. Yeah, and redevelopment. And that's what's happened, and that's what happened. That's what's happened in Chinatown. You look at Chinatown. There's only three Chinese restaurants in Chinatown. Hmm. Because now they redevelop. You see, all, you look around. All these places is rising up. Where's the Chinese people? At where's their restaurant? Where, where, where's their home? Where, I mean, it's happening right. in the name, like you say, in the name of development. Well, like Bruce brings up a point. Yeah. It's not just about African American or people of color. It's, it's, affecting, it's affecting everybody. Because yeah. if you look out southeast, how the crime rate has gone up. It's basically mm-hmm. lack of planning and lack mm-hmm. of. Uh, uh, attention to, to to the whole to the whole area exactly and so forth so well, I, and, I think and, and that's the same thing what they did in Chicago you had all these high rises up uh, the projects or the row houses and in this high rise you had the Latin Kings and this had you had the Americans and here you had the disciples you had 
the uh, vice mm -hmm. lord. And so what they did, they tore all these down and put all these people in one mm -hmm. project and they shooting each other. They letting them get rid of each other. Right. So now you got this prime property on the waterfront where used to be projects and with people of color and they building high rises up. The same thing they doing out now, they putting all the gangs into the same area right. and they fighting and killing each other. One of the things that really worries me is a lot, you know, we hear a lot about uh, the big one coming to Portland or, you know, the fault lines and so forth and the earthquake and how soon it's going to come and so forth and the, and, the, and the need to retrofit uh, a lot of things. And none of that is being looked at. None of that is being done. And I just think about you know, how how the homeless <laughs> folks going to, if the big one hit, what about, you know, just the cost in human lives in terms of what do the homeless people do? Wait, well, you remember they, we all remember do. they had that big flood. That planet, remember they, they had that big flood or that water yeah. thing in New right. York, right. and homeless people was living on the subway. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. did they yeah. ever yeah. tell you what yeah. happened to those oh, they, they people? They drowned like rats. Mm -hmm. They never mentioned that. No, they, they, they but drowned. we know it was, it was quite a bit. Yeah, we I know, know, yeah, I know but they never gave you that number. They just covered it over and nothing. So that's what's going to happen to people here. We so that's why I mean I'm saying it first that. The houseless people should learn how to live in the wilderness, learn self-defense, and start protecting themselves and know how to live because they not they gonna put a big wall around the city and not gonna let well, us. Unfortunately, back in. they're already doing they're already self doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> well, we did. well, I mean that that it says defense is defending yourself, yeah. not being aggressive. Well, you this know, is learning how a, to live. This is what we need a yeah. comprehensive, a yeah. comprehensive approach. To, to that, and I'm glad that uh, Bruce is bringing these issues and yeah. the helping us bring these issues to, to to light because you know they've been ignored by a significant portion of city government and and, and, the, and, the, and the people. Well, yeah, uh, they've been ignored people. because people think houseless people are the lowest form of life, mm. but I think the lowest form of life who impose that on people that go into the well, streets they to live they without. have no political power. Right. That's, no that's where it is. Well, that's the, that's the rationale. That you know, rationale. As I indicated mm -hmm. before, you know I mean? No due respect, I'm at my age, just, that's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. I should be somewhat enjoying myself you know, as a senior too. citizen. I mean, you're, you're the, we're in the I'm same coming boat. close. <laughs> but, but, you, but, you, but, but you can't do it. You know, we got grandkids, we got this, that, and the other. And, and because we've been in this business so long, we mm -hmm. see what's happening. Right. And we got to do something. And a lot of times you can't speak to them. I mean, how, how long have you been on the shows? How long oh, have I been on the shows? We've been on this stuff oh, for God. years. Yeah. We were talking. Yeah. And so now you got to use the tool. So I'm running for office, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives me that time frame. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that I don't, I don't fall for the Oprah dope. <laughs> and just go, go out debating and stuff. Yeah. I'm saying I start acting right. like the person that I, I'm acting like the person yeah. I'm running for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. running for mayor. I'm mayor now until right. the 17th of May. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Your solutions as well too. But yeah. The yeah but but I'm saying no. We, I'm talking solutions. That's why he's here. That's why you, I gave you the opportunity to talk with. You see, we, they need to know that it's an issue That's across the board. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we got about another one minute. What would what would your last statement be to the to the viewers? I would like to brother Rashid. I mean, you got some views, right? No, no, he's going to be back. Okay, he's going to be back. Yeah. Okay, my Say last, real quick, my last real quick. statement is that people are human everywhere. Look at your humanity spirit and help each other out. We in this together. And just because somebody on the street don't mean they did something bad, the government put them in a bad situation. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. that. Thank right. you very much for being with us. Yeah. See? Thank you, Thank you, buddy. Okay, good. Right. Thank you, folks. See you next time around. Have a good one. <laughs>